Hi guys and welcome to the next video of this entire series. In this video, I will be discussing what are mail flow rules or transport rules in Exchange Online. In last session, we discussed what is an email header and what does email header include. And I have shown you how we can collect and analyze email header. In this session, I will be discussing what are mail flow rules in Exchange Online and how you can control email routing in your organization using mail flow rules. And I will be showing you how we can manage mail flow rules from Exchange Admin Center and from PowerShell. With the help of mail flow rules, we can control email routing within our organization. We can block certain senders, we can block emails, or we can add a disclaimer in all incoming and outgoing emails. In Exchange Online Protection, mail flow rules scan emails post anti malware and before anti spam checks. A mail flow rule processes an email before even it reaches a user mailbox. Whereas if you compare mail flow rules with inbox rules, inbox rule will process an email when it will reach the mailbox. Mail flow rules have four components conditions, actions, exceptions and properties. Now let's understand these components one by one. Conditions identify the emails that you want to apply the actions to. On the basis of conditions, we can filter the emails on which we want to apply the action. We can filter emails on the basis of to field, from field, email size on the basis of attachments, we can filter emails on the basis of email body or email subject. And there are many more conditions that we can use as an administrator to manage the mail flow. Actions specify what to do with the emails that meet the conditions specified within the rule. With the help of actions, we can delete emails, we can forward emails to an email address, we can add disclaimer on every email, and we can move emails to the quarantine portal as well. Moreover, there are multiple actions that we can configure within Mailflow rules. Exceptions identify the emails on which actions should not be applied. We can use same set of email identifiers which are available within conditions. We can define multiple conditions and exceptions using AND and OR operators. So depending on the requirement, we can configure Mailflow rules. Now let's discuss properties of the mail flow rules. While creating or managing a mail flow rule, we come across few properties. Priority defines the order in which mail flow rules should process the emails. By enabling audit level for a rule, we can collect incident logs within the message trace or within the extended message trace. Mode specify whether you want the rule to process the emails immediately or you want to test that particular rule and then you want to enable it. Activation date specifies when the rule will get active and will start processing the emails. Deactivation date specifies the date when rule will stop processing the emails. Enabled indicates that the particular rule is active and will process the emails. You can create a mail flow rule with disabled state and later you can enable it. With the help of stop processing more rules property, we can choose to stop applying duplicate rules on a particular email. Now let's understand how we can create a mail flow rule using conditions, actions and exceptions. Let's assume that a user who does not belong to your organization is sending spam emails to your users. The sender's email address is badguy at random.com and his email server's IP address is 1.2.3.4. As an administrator, we want to block this sender so that we do not receive any spam email within our organization. As an end user, we can add this particular sender within the block list of junk settings, but these settings will take effect when email will reach the user's mailbox. 
but with the help of mail flow rules we can stop a particular email before even it reaches the organization to achieve this we will create a mail flow rule in this scenario we can create a transport rule based on the sender's email address or on the basis of connecting ip address which is the ip address of the email server so first we will define a condition if sender's email address is bad guy at random.com and action will be delete the email to create a mail flow rule on the basis of connecting ip address we will create a condition for example that if sender's ip address is within this range delete the email we can create multiple conditions using and and or operators for example if sender's email address is bad guy at random.com or sender's ip address is within range of 1.2.3.4 action will be delete the email so in this scenario if email address or ip address matches the conditions specified within the rule action will be taken if we use and operator in the same scenario in that case both conditions should match if one of the condition will fail mail flow rule will not trigger on that particular email we can create mail flow rules from modern exchange admin center and from classic exchange admin center as well to create a mail flow rule from modern exchange admin center we will click on mail flow and then rules if we want to create mail flow rules from classic exchange admin center we will move to mail flow and then rules to create a rule we will click on drop down arrow and then create a new rule here first we need to specify a name for the rule for example a random name and then we will specify a condition we can create conditions based on the sender recipient on the basis of subject or body of the email we can select conditions based on the attachments which are attached within the email for example if you want to create a transport rule or mail flow rule based on the sender you can select the sender is this person if the sender is internal you can select the email address or the display name from this list if the sender is external then we will type the email address of the external sender next to check names for example random guy at random.com check names and click okay so the condition is ready now the next option is action what action you want to specify if the sender email address is random guy at random.com for example we can block the email so you can click on the block the message and delete the message without notifying anyone so as soon as random guy at random.com will send an email to your organization that means if this email address will send email to any of your users within your office 365 tenant that email will be deleted by this transport rule under exception we can add conditions on which this transport rule should not take any action for example if we can select the sender ip addresses for example 1.2.3.4 and click okay now what this rule says if the sender is random guy at random.com delete the email however if the ip address if this user will send email from this ip address then do not delete that email so this is how we can specify exceptions within a mail flow rule the next property of a transport rule is auditing level we should always select it high so that the transport rule action and the conditions will be logged within the message trace or extended message trace logs next option is enforce if if you want to apply this rule immediately as soon as we create we can select enforce this is the activation date and deactivation date and this is the option from where you can stop the duplicate rules to be take action on particular email 
and then click save. If you want to check what sort of transport rules you have created already within your Exchange Online environment, for that you can run command get hyphen transport rule and press enter. This will list all the transport rules which exist within your Office 365 tenant. To create a new transport rule, we will use new hyphen transport rule. Then we will specify a name for this particular transport rule. For example, redirect emails. Now let's assume that we want to create a transport rule where we want to redirect emails which are sent from a particular external sender to an internal user. So for example, if email is received from this email address, redirect the email to, or the switch will be redirect message to the internal user and press enter. So with the help of this transport rule, we will redirect all the emails which are sent from na at na.com. These emails will be redirected to user A, which is an internal user within your Office 365 tenant. So in this particular session, we have discussed what are Mailflow rules and how we can control email routing using Mailflow rules in Exchange Online. In the next session, I will be discussing what is high risk delivery pool or HRDP, and we will be discussing how does high risk delivery pool works. So if you have learned something new from this video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.